Hey there, how are you, Kingdom community? I'm Naomi Byers and I'm giving you a big g'day from down under here from Brisbane, Australia, uh, coming to you wherever you are tuning in from. I want to share with you today a message from um, the book of Exodus. Um, we're going to be looking through specifically the parting of the Red Sea. Isn't, is, isn't that just an absolutely fantastic story? I certainly love reading it as a kid. Uh, but we're going to be looking at the issue of fighting for our peace um, in this uh, ongoing series I've been doing called Overcoming Fear. And you can check out more of my teachings on the, um, the Kingdom community. So welcome to you all. I hope that this is really going to be a powerful time of impartation, especially in the climate of fear that we presently live in. It's so important for us to be able to know practically how to fight for our God-given peace. Who, who, who agrees? Who agrees that we need to hold on to our peace in this hour? All right, so that our overarching scripture, our passage, our teaching is going to come from Exodus 14. I'm going to reading, be reading out of the New King James Version if you want to follow along with me. Um, yeah, so let's go. All right, I'm going to start with the first uh, point that I want to make today, the first, the first practical strategy that I want to give you to fight for your peace in a climate where things are really, really difficult and it's really, really hard. Let's face it, life is difficult right now. But if you talk to the older generation, I know that they had it difficult too. They had a difficult time. We've been through, we've weathered these kind of storms before. We can do it again. So it's important that we understand how to hold on to our peace. All right, I want to pick up by reading, for me, reading the Bible is like oxygen. So I want to start with just highlighting from um, Exodus 14 verses 5 to 8. We're going to start reading there. Read along with me. And it says, Now it was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from, <clears throat> excuse me, I've just lost my place, let Israel go from serving us. So he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. Also, he took 600 choice chariots and all the chariots of Egypt with captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the children of Israel and the children of Israel went out with boldness. Isn't that interesting? Now, when I was reading this text, the, the Lord highlighted to me 600, the number 600 uh, chariots. I thought, well, that's significant. What are you trying to say here, Lord? And I believe it's this. The number six is 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 uh, believed to be indicative of, of the number of man, the flesh, um, because, you know, man was created on the sixth day and we are, we are flesh and bone. We are flesh. Um, God's redeemed our flesh. Jesus has redeemed it. But when, if you, if you saw my last teaching, fear is a foe, which is from the story of David and Goliath, you'll understand that fear is something that wants to pull us into the place of the flesh. So I believe what's happening here is there's these 600 chariots and six meaning the number of the flesh times it by a hundred. We're talking about what do we do when the flesh opposes in force, when our flesh is absolutely screaming out at us and we've lost our peace the peace that Jesus gave us, the sturdy abiding peace that he promised we could have in the midst of any storm. All right, I do believe this is key here. This is pretty key. So bear with me. I'm going to read um, scripture as we go along to just, yeah, just help help us understand. So what are my, some of the common things that will steal our peace? Well, this is, um, and I'm speaking prophetically here as well as this is just basic Christian Living 101, but the debt of unforgiveness will cause us to lose our peace. Matthew 18, 28 says, but that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat and saying, pay me what you owe. So it was this, this, um, Look, the truth of the matter is we live this life for any period of time. We are going to be hurt. We are going to have people do things to us that are not fair, um, but that we, we cannot hold on to the debt of unforgiveness. And offence is rife in the world right now. Look, everyone is so triggered and so offended so easily. And the church cannot fall into that trap because if we do, we are, we are basically falling into the the the, the uh, what John Revere calls the bait of Satan, the trap of offense, it's a snare. And it, 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 it comes with it a heavy weight of unforgiveness and it will absolutely steal our peace. So we cannot 
afford to allow that to steal our peace. So how do we stand still and hold on to our peace? Well, I think the first thing is obviously making sure that we have forgiven our fellow brothers and sisters and we've forgiven people. All right, um, let's keep reading on in the story. Let's skip verse to verses 10 to 12 of Exodus 14, which says, And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Oh, deep breath. What's happening here? What's happening here? The, the, the uh, Israelites are saying, hey, we'd rather be back in bondage in, in Egypt than, than be sitting here having to trust God and face what we're facing. Even though they left with boldness, they were, you know, they were released and then they, they, they meet the Red Sea, they see the Egyptians coming and fear grabs a hold of them. And what is the temptation they want to succumb to? The temptation to return to bondage. So um, just as forgiveness, unforgiveness will steal our peace, the temptation to return to bondage will definitely steal our peace. And that's not something we can succumb to in this hour because we've been set free. Praise God. Are you free? Can I get an amen, a hallelujah? All right, let's continue reading um, verses 13 and 14. Just a moment, I'll make sure that's up on your screen so you're following along with me. There's, there's 13 and 14 of our story. And it says, And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I love that. i got to read that again. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Oh, goosebumps. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. So here's the important thing. When you are fighting to hold on to your peace, your God-given peace, you, me, we all need to remember to actually stand still and hold on to our peace. Hold it, even if you've got to um, think about holding it in your hands. Like if we've got to, we've got to actually arrest our souls in that moment and hold on to our peace and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hold your peace. The Lord is fighting for you. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. So that is the first practical aspect I have for you in terms of, um, yeah, fighting for our peace. What do we to, In order to fight for our peace, we've got to learn to be still. We've got to learn to let go of unforgiveness. We've got to not be tempted to return to bondage, including fear. And we've got to learn to physically um, know how to arrest our soul and hold onto peace and see the salvation of the Lord. But as we're going to read on in the story, you're going to see that there's a time where the Lord instructs you to move forward. So there are times to stand still and there are times to move forward. All right, we're going to continue reading in our story. Let's read verses 15 and 16 of our text which says, um, and the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Hallelujah. And I believe this is a season where we need to learn when it is to be still and when we need to advance. And this is where we need to press into the spirit and, and go, right, okay, sometimes we just got to stand still and let God fight our battles. And sometimes the Lord goes, what, what, what are you doing? Move, move. I've, I've got your back, basically. He was there with the, uh, the, cloud, the pillar of cloud by day and the, the, the fire by night. He was there. He was with them. His physical, tangible presence was with them. And they had to learn. Um, they had to learn once he spoke to move forward through Moses to move forward and advance because he was going to make a way. So we need to learn in this season when we need to be still and when we need to advance. And it is only God that gives us this wisdom. All right. Now, when we do advance, how do we advance? I believe it's very, very clear. If we want to fight to hold on to our peace, then we can't move ahead in the flesh. This is, you know, the flesh is opposing in force with fear. We can't 
fight fear with fear, we have to we have to respond with, with the opposite spirit. And it's very important that we advance in peace. So when we are told to move forward, we advance in peace. Why? Because our shoes, according to Ephesians 6.15, our shoes, our feet are shod with the gospel of the preparation of peace. So when we move forward, we always advance in peace. If we're not advancing in peace, we should be standing still and letting God fight our battles. When it's time to move forward, we need to advance in peace. All right, what do you think of that? Let's move on, keep reading our text. We're going to drop down to verses 21 and 22, which reads, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. I love that. Who, who remembers the old Ten Commandments movie, that, not the horrible one that Ridley Scott made, but the, the, the old one with Charlton Heston. Wasn't that just an amazing image? Oh, wow, it's it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. But what actually happened? Look at the text. This is key here. When we're told to move forward and we know we've got to advance in peace, we want to hold our peace, we want to hold on to our peace, we want to fight for our peace, we've got to advance in peace. But what's the key here? Moses lifted the rod of power first, and then the seas parted. All right. So we're what what we need to do is exercise our faith. We need to exercise our faith. And we actually do this through tapping into the holiness of God, the holiness that is an invitation from God, that's something we put on, we sink into, we, we step out in holiness. That's how the power of God manifests in our life. And we activate it through faith. So when we activate our faith, put that rod of power, then the seas will part. So we actually have to take steps of faith. We want to advance in peace. We want to hold on to our peace. We want to fight for our peace. We have got to lift the rod of power first in faith. And then the promise is the waters will part. He's a good God, isn't he? Don't you agree? He's a good God. Does he not do what he says he will do? All right. Um, the next scripture before I move on to my last point for today comes from Ezekiel. Oh, how I love Ezekiel. I've been spending a long time studying this book this year. All right, Ezekiel um, chapter 30, sorry, chapter 43, verses 1 to 2. This is interesting because it's talking about the east. I want to highlight something here. Afterward, he brought me to the gate, the gate that faces toward the east, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. His voice was like the sound of many waters, and the earth shone with his glory. I want to highlight this because remember when Moses lifted the rod of power over the sea, the, the sea and a strong east wind blew and blew basically part of the waters of the sea. And there's an invitation right now. If we want to see the victory, if we want to see the glory of God risen upon us, we need that east wind. And how do we access that? It's simply partnering with God. It's partnering with God, listening to the sound of his voice. And, and he will, as we st take those steps of faith, he will part the waters. He will make a way. He is the way maker. Hallelujah. Is he not the way maker? Is he not the God of the universe? Is there anything impossible for God? There is nothing. Can, can I get an amen on that? Praise God. So I summarize where we've been so far. When we, we, when we fight for our peace, sometimes we need to stand still. Sometimes we need to move forward when God gives us the nudge. And then here's the other thing. As we move forward, it's important for us to not turn aside. Do not turn aside. All right, let's keep reading in our text. That's uh, where we're up to now. We are now at um, Exodus 14, 26 to 29, still reading our story. Then we're going to skip over and read some, some verses in Joshua. Okay, where are we? Verse 26. And it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, on their chariots and on their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth while the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots, the horsemen, and all the army of Pharaoh that came to the sea after them. Not so much as one of them 
them remained. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, praise God, and the waters were a wall on them on their right hand and on their left. And when I read that, I heard the Lord say, do not turn to the right or to the left. And I'm like, hang on a minute. I've heard that somewhere else in scripture. And it is. It's in Joshua chapter 1. If you'll turn with me now in your Bibles, Joshua chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. It says, I don't know if I'll read all of it, but we'll, we'll read some of it. Every place the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this, etc., etc. I'll move on. We'll drop down to the 6. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So we, in order to hold on to and fight for our peace, we have got to, when we are advancing in peace, we cannot turn to the right or to the left. We have got to take that ground, take that ground in the name of Jesus. Take that ground. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? All right. I want to finish. Um, well, before I finish, I'll finish with some declarations and prayer. But I want to talk a little bit more about um, how important it is as we advance in peace and as we as we move forward in the assignment he's given us in this season, that we take care and heed to where we are walking. Proverbs 25, sorry, Proverbs 25. 4 verses 25 and 27 says, let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Remember, there is an invitation for us to really be walking in holiness in this season. And finally, here's the here's one of the most important admonitions that we can take or exhortations that we can take in order to fight for our God-given peace. Proverbs 4.23, we know it well. Proverbs 4.23. And it says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it spring the issues of life. And other versions say, guard your heart. So we are we are instructed to guard our heart. So in this season of fear, really trying to speak, it's, it's, it's noisy. There's a lot of noise in the atmosphere. We want to fight for our peace. We want to stand still to see the salvation of the Lord. We want to move when he's telling us to move, move forward, advancing in peace. And we want to, as we move, not turn to the right or left, keep our foot on the path. Remember, he is able to keep us from falling. Praise God, he is able. We're going to move into some declarations now and I'll put them up on your screen as we go. This is how we're going to close out the session. We're going to pray through it. Hopefully, I don't want to go over my time. I want to be honouring of um, Apostle Glenn and, and the community and of your time. So let's move into this time. They'll be on the screen. Here's the first one. And we're going to declare them and pray into this as we close out today in this time of sharing together. So speak say with me when anxiety doubt worry and fear come knocking i remember to be still and exalt your name above it all thank you jesus i have the power to forgive debts i choose as an act of my will to forgive any and all who have hurt me daily i release and you just need to name the person, the people, the organization, whoever it is, just name it. I release them into the power of my forgiveness and declare all debts are now cancelled in the name of Jesus. Thank you for forgiving me, Father. I will stand when I feel the storm raging and see the salvation of the Lord. I praise you, Father, this bondage I see today, I will never see again. Hallelujah. Who's, who's excited about that? Press into that today by faith. I'm, this bondage I'm seeing, I'm never going to see it again. Your promises, I'll never see this again in Jesus' mighty name. You are fighting for me and I shall hold on to my peace. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
I am a child of God. Therefore, I am led by the Spirit of God. Who's a child of God? We're led by his spirit. Hallelujah. We do not need to be afraid or be dismayed. I declare I have the discernment through the spirit of wisdom, counsel, and revelation to recognize when to pick up my sword and fight and when to down tools and rest in him. He's going to pour out that wisdom. Just ask for it. He gives it freely. I will partner with God and be yoked only to Christ, my burden bearer. Thank you, Jesus. Even when great darkness surrounds me, your glory, Lord, is risen upon me. I will arise and shine and fight for my inheritance in Christ. Rise up, you mighty warriors. He's raising an army right now. Peace is my portion. I will not surrender it under any circumstance. Thank you, Jesus. I decree I take territory in the spirit realm. Every place where my feet fall, I claim for the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. I shift the atmosphere wherever I go. I bring peace because I'm wearing peace on my feet. Thank you, Jesus. I will keep my eyes fixed on you, Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. I will not turn to the right or to the left. Oh, I feel the anointing on that. Who's feeling that? Praise God. I will fight to keep my heart at peace and steward this precious gift you have given me well. In Jesus' name and all of God's people said, amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. It's been so lovely to share with you at this time in the kingdom community. I'm so privileged to uh, be a part of this kingdom community. It's pretty new to me, but I'm so enjoying sharing with you guys and interacting with you guys online and seeing the wonderful teachings that come through. And I just want to encourage you that, um, yeah, the world's crazy right now, but it's been crazy before and we're going to be okay. We just need to learn to resist fear. Let's not partner with fear in this season. Fear is a foe. You can find that in my last teaching. It's not part of your God-given inheritance in Christ. Peace is yours. It's your portion in Christ. Fight to hold on to it. Do not surrender it under any circumstance. And I hope that today's teaching has been able to enable you to have some practical tools, some scriptures, some declarations that you can use in this season to fight for your peace and hold on to it in the midst of the storm. Praise God. He is good. He is altogether good. He is altogether loved. Lovely. He is altogether worthy. He is worthy of all our praise, honor, and adoration. And he is able. He is able. He's able. Praise God. I pray that's blessed you today. God bless you abundantly. And no matter how dark the storm is, I just encourage you continue to dream big with God always. And I'm signing off here, um, sending you all, all my love from down under. Um, here in Australia, please continue to pray for us here in Australia as we pray for you all around the world. Um, much love in Christ. Go out with peace. Go out with peace in his name. All right. Blessings. See you later.